All right, Brendan, what should we know about rejection sensitivity dysphoria? Global pandemic. You got to start there. A lot of us spent a long time not seeing other people. And even though we were not rejected by anybody, our subconscious is kind of feeling rejected during that time. Coming out of that, I knew plenty of people had trouble reaching out and contacting friends and knowing what to do with that because they hadn't talked in a year. So there's this like underlying small T trauma that comes with COVID, depending on how you handled it, that might be exacerbating this fear of trying something new because during COVID, don't try anything new and of risking rejection or experiencing rejection because a lot of COVID felt like social rejection because of all the isolation that happened. So that's playing a role here. I just want to point that out. Also, rejection sensitivity does go along with ADHD. A lot of that is because, you know, we don't meet expectations like we would like to. And when we don't meet expectations, we feel like we're going to get rejected. And whether we do or we don't doesn't matter. We just feel like we're going to. And so that builds up and builds up and builds up over time. I highly recommend that you go to Jessica McCabe's How to ADHD channel on YouTube and find the rejection sensitivity videos and share those things with your kids so that they can learn about it. Because if they don't know that this is a thing that exists, they can't play the head game of, is this a really strong rejection or am I overreacting? Is this something I should, am I giving this the correct amount of emotional weight? If they don't know that they could play that game, they're not going to, and they're going to overestimate the amount of emotional weight. There's another part of rejection sensitivity dysphoria that we will discuss tomorrow.